Good morning. Welcome to the Premium Public Video Forecast Discussion for Friday, April 28th, 2023. As you know, every Friday we do a Premium Public Video Discussion so you guys out there in the public can see what we do every day in the Premium section, breaking down all of the little features and factors that influence our weather. I have all the model data right here, and of course I have my buff kit data here where I'm looking at some of the lifting parameters for this weekend's rainfall event. So let's talk about what we're dealing with right now. And we'll look at the observations, but also look at what's going on in the background here and the weather pattern overall. Currently, we have a warm front approaching. Well, it's stationary right now. It's going to become a warm front as we move forward throughout the day. With winds coming in from the Atlantic Ocean at uh, from the east around 5 to 15 miles per hour. And that's transporting moisture in from the Atlantic, which leads to a lot of low clouds and some drizzle and a few isolated showers here and there, but not the main event, at least not yet. Temperatures this morning range from the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior, upper 40s to lower 50s around your suburbs, and lower to mid 50s as you head down towards southern New Jersey and in your urban areas. As you can take a look on the radar here, well, there's there's plenty of action here on our weather tap radar and surface map. You have a ton of rain that is developing and moving through the Washington, D.C. metro and the southern mid-Atlantic, and that extends all the way back into the Ohio River Valley. You have a complex area of low pressure with various centers developing over the Tennessee River Valley and southern mid-Atlantic. And then you have another cold front off to the west and another low pressure system developed around Texas. It's going to lead to more severe weather, unfortunately, around uh, portions of Dallas and Fort Worth and lifting up towards southern Oklahoma. And that's setting up our next wave of rainfall. So what's going on? Let's understand what's going on in the background here before we really dive into the nitty gritty of the forecast. And, well, it all comes down to El Nino. And not, not the one from SNL, but the real El Nino that's starting to develop. Now, this is the SOI data. And I look at this quite a bit. I bring this up to a lot of premium members. You can get an idea of where the pattern is evolving by looking at the SOI. Because it's kind of like a, a atmospheric reaction to what's happening with the sea surface temperatures. Okay, So, when you're looking at the daily uh, contributions, like this right here, this kind of gives you an idea of where the pattern is going. When it's negative, it's going to be more stormy for the eastern United States. When it's positive, it's going to be a little bit quieter, right? Uh, there is a lag time, so it's not a one-to-one -one ratio of like, you know, if it's negative today, therefore it will be stormy today. It doesn't work like that. There's a little bit of a lag time involved here. But you can see the negative influence, and now we're moving into a stormy pattern. So give it about three to five days, right? So you can see right here, we go into a little bit more of a positive trend. And so that would support more, less amplified pattern, a calmer pattern. But look at the overall theme. The overall theme over the 30 and 90 day period is trending from a La Nina state with very amplified high positive values to a neutral state where it's kind of right around zero between minus five and plus five, somewhere in that ballpark. And it's heading towards an El Nino state, which is a very negative state. When you're talking about negative teens and 20s and, and very strong El Ninos, minus 30. So we're moving in that direction. And in the meantime, we're also seeing convection that is starting to fire up around the dateline. Now, Cosin Ussolini research strongly suggests, especially in winter storms, but you could also use it in the spring and the summer as well, that when we start to see a lot of convection around the dateline, which is right about here, okay, when you start to see that convection, it enhances the subtropical jet stream and enhances the polar jet stream in such a way that it sets up for stormier weather patterns. So we're moving in all these directions. Now, I know what you're going to do. You're going to try to jump ahead and say, well, that means the winter's going to be, stop, stop. We don't know what the winter is going to be. But so before we get those emails, let's chill on that for a bit. I mean, it, it is April. I'm already getting those emails. I get it. I'll put it this way. It can't possibly be as snowless as the last winter. Thing that I probably just jinxed myself. But at any rate, we can't make those assumptions yet. But what we can say with this is that it's enhancing the subtropical jet stream. So 
when we take a look at our subtropical jet stream, it answers why we're seeing all this amplification in the polar and in the subtropical jet stream. And it explains why we're seeing short wave after short wave marching along in the subtropical jet stream. And our polar jet stream is so amplified. Tropical forcing, tropical convection in the Pacific is enhancing our pattern here. So now that we understand that, we get a better idea of what is evolving and what we can expect with these storms and how all this is, is taking place here. So with that, let's take a look at the infrared satellite picture. And you can see quite a bit of lifting showing up here. This is convection down here, not tropical in any way, but it is a very important signal here. And I want you to keep this reference in the back of your mind when we take a look at the model guidance here where we have this convection showing up here it's associated with the storm we have another area of convection here with some lifting a lot of this is what we call isotropic lifting that's warm air transport so when we take a look at this this is the moisture you can see the gradient here this is moisture transport take a look at our temperatures here this is warm air transport so what's happening is that warm air is moving over cooler air kind of a very basic uh explanation here basically is that we have a maritime air mass at the surface a tropical air mass coming in at the mid levels so that leads to rising motion kind of like a skateboarder on a ramp and that's what we call isotropic lifting so all that is starting to take place and starting to evolve and that is how we start to get our storm we're essentially for this weekend we're dealing with two very impressive warm fronts that's basically what we're dealing with here because your primary low pressure systems, which is just right here and this right here, are all lifting up towards the Great Lakes. And so you get this warm air transport and this tropical moisture surging northward, acting like one big warm front. And when we get that, we get what we call waves. One wave at 500 millibars, 700 millibars, 850 millibars, and so on. So you get waves of rainfall moving through and various forms of convection as a result. So when we take a look at our model guidance here, you can see the first wave coming in. Now we have this little ridge axis here this morning that's keeping us generally dry. That's sinking air at 500 millibars. And so there's our first wave coming in at 500 millibars this evening. 700 millibars, our next wave is approaching around midnight on through tomorrow morning. And then at 850 millibars tomorrow morning through tomorrow afternoon. So various waves of lifting in front of Genesis and enhanced 500 millibar PVA and falling 500 millibar heights all help to enhance the warm air transport that is attempting to move into the region. And so when we take a look at the precipital water values, what that means is that we get these waves of rainfall coming in with higher and higher precipital water values to work with. So up to that point, when we take a look at the NAM guidance, there's our first wave coming in. Now, a lot of this is what we call Virga. It's not going to reach the ground. It's going to have a difficult time where it's going to be a lot lighter than what the radar is showing. But eventually the dry air just gets driven out at the mid-levels and you get this waves of moderate heavy rainfall later this afternoon through the evening. There's wave one, here comes wave two around midnight, and then tomorrow morning, here comes wave three on into the afternoon hour. So when you're in between these waves, expect overcast cloud cover. You might see a small break of sun just because of sinking air and rising air influence, but also a lot of drizzle, just unsettled conditions. So if you have plans, for this evening or for tomorrow, I don't know, like a Mets game or something like that, which I'm getting asked about like 50,000 times. Yeah, there's going to be a good chance it's going to be impacted delays, postponements. I don't know what MLB will do. I don't know what your organization might do when it comes to rainfall, but I can tell you that you will need an umbrella, okay, because you're going to be dealing with waves of rainfall. And because of the lifting parameters here, some of this rainfall will be heavy at times. So we're looking anywhere between a half an inch to maybe an inch and a half of rain with this wave. Then we get the second wave coming in. And this one features, again, another low pressure system in the subtropical jet stream becoming entrained in the polar jet stream with this upper level low that introduces strong lifting on Sunday evening. 
and strong warm air transport. Now, remember what I pointed out about that convection. Keep that in mind with this strong warm air transport playing uh, involved in this uh, low pressure system. And there is our strong lifting again with our upper level low. So when we take a look at the precipitate water values, ah, this right here, Sunday afternoon and evening. Now, you don't take this verbatim, but what it kind of tells you is that, look, there's a lot of convection involved in the second low pressure system that comes through Sunday afternoon through Monday morning. And with that, there is going to be the potential on the coastal plain for some showers and embedded thunderstorms capable of some very heavy downpours. You never take this stuff verbatim. This is most likely a convective feedback error. But, but what it tells you what is what the potential is. And the potential here is that we're going to have a little bit more of a tropical influence with this second low pressure system, a little bit more of a tropical connection because of the way that the low pressure system is developing. And so there's going to be that potential on the coastal plain for some heavier downpours and possibly going above what you would normally expect for the rest of the region. So this again looks like another half an inch or inch and a half of rain, but don't be surprised if a few locations in the second storm alone gets about two inches of rain out of this, especially on the New Jersey coast, through Long Island and Connecticut. With that said, we're looking at anywhere between on average one to three inches of rain throughout the region with some locations going above that and there will be the potential for some urban flooding and flash flooding. So a rather wet weekend is on the way. If you have plans for outdoor activities, well, you might want to postpone them or at the very least plan for a nice good raincoat to wear while you're outside. And by the way, this pattern remains unsettled until we get to about the middle of May. Now, remember what I was pointing out with the SOI, uh, taking a look at the MJO forcing, if you're looking for a milder pattern, this is certainly a nice signal that's showing up here. This would influence about the middle of the month. So we'll wait on that and see how that evolves. But uh, in the meantime, early part of uh, May, unfortunately, looks to remain rather unsettled and rather active. So, um, well, at the very least, it'll help with the fire issue, right? So that's certainly some good news. So let's dive into this forecast for today. Rain is developing throughout the day, becoming heavy by this evening. Temperatures will rise into the lower to mid 50s for highs. For tonight into tomorrow morning, periods of rain, heavy at times, winds coming in from the southeast around 10 to 20 miles per hour, not exactly the best weather conditions for outdoor activities, like, oh, I don't know, baseball game in the evening. Look for low temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 40s throughout the region. For tomorrow afternoon, periods of showers continue to linger. The strongest and heaviest rainfall will start to lift to the north of the region, but we'll still have these pesky showers, keep over brief heavy downpours, some drizzle, just kind of raw conditions outside with high temperatures ranging in the lower to mid 50s. A few upper 50s to lower 60s are possible around Philadelphia Metro if we get a little bit more clearing. So we'll keep an eye on that. On Sunday, we get a bit of a break. We're in between storms. So look for scattered broken cloud cover, a pesky shower here and there, but not any widespread rainfall yet. We'll hold that off until the late afternoon hours. So your driest conditions this weekend will essentially be Sunday morning with low temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior, upper 40s to lower 50s along the coast. High temperatures will rise into the mid to upper 50s over the northern interior, lower to mid 60s along the coast. Periods of rain will be in place by Sunday evening, continuing into Monday morning. The morning rush hour on Monday is not looking pretty, but but if we get this timing just right, the bulk of the heaviest rainfall might just clear out by the time we get to the middle of the morning rush hour. So we'll see how that timing plays out. But definitely Sunday night into early Monday morning, it's just driving heavy rainfall, strong winds with low temperatures falling off into the mid to upper 40s over the northern interior, lower to mid 50s along the coast. Monday afternoon, look for scattered cloud cover with lingering isolated showers with high temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 50s over the interior, upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast. On Tuesday, 
That upper level low lingers around the region. This is more bark than bite here. Looking at scattered broken cloud cover with some pesky showers. Some of those showers would be convective based, which typically means that you have the model guidance as far out producing convective feedback. So what you end up with is scattered broken cloud cover, pesky shower here and there, and some of those showers are capable of some brief heavy downpours. Look for low temperatures on Tuesday, ranging from the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior, mid to upper 40s along the coast. High temperatures, again, you have this upper level low overhead, so a lot of chilly air aloft, will lead to the mid to upper 40s over the northern interior, lower to mid 50s around the New York City metro, and mid to upper 50s around the Philadelphia metro. Yeah, a bit chilly. On Wednesday, an upper level low continues to linger around the region with scattered broken cloud cover. A few isolated showers would be a threat. Look for low temperatures ranging from the upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 50s over the northern interior, mid to upper 50s along the coast. On Thursday, another area of low pressure, another trough hanging around the region, sky cloud cover, an isolated shower here and there, not a washout, but a bit of a pest. Look for low temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s, high temperatures in the lower to mid 50s. And once again, Friday, another area of low pressure will approach with periods of showers, possibly some heavier downpours. We'll see how this low pressure system develops. There's some disagreement on how this evolves. It could be a little bit further south. We'll keep an eye on that. Look for low temperatures in the mid to upper 30s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s along the coast, high temperatures in the mid to upper 50s over the interior, lower to mid 60s along the coast, with again the potential for widespread rainfall. We'll keep an eye on it. That is your forecast discussion for today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And as always, 